Moving on now, Venezuelan lawmakers re-elected a key ally of President Hugo Chavez as Speaker of the National Assembly. This move puts him in line to become caretaker president if Chavez's health doesn't improve. Chavez's allies hold a majority of the 165 congressional seats. The South American leader is currently in Cuba, struggling to recover from his latest round of cancer surgery. Opposition leaders insist if the president's health keeps him from returning to the country by inauguration day on January 10th, a new election must be called. But Chavez's allies say the date is not a hard deadline. Venezuelan Vice President Nicolas Maduro says even if Chavez is too ill to take the oath of office, he would be sworn in. He could be sworn in by the Supreme Court at a later time. If a new election is called, the Speaker of the Assembly must lead the country until results are in. The President enjoys a permission which is in accordance with the Constitution of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. And this permission will be fulfilled. They can spin it however they want to, and they can look for whomever they want. But the 10th of January will never turn into a space for the will of the people and of the street expressed on the 7th of October to be rejected. Well, from Detroit, I'm joined by Abiyomi Azikiwe, political commentator. Welcome to the program, sir. Mr. Azikiwe, just how will Chavez's poor health conditions have an impact on his presidency and his group of allies? Well, I believe that uh, the Venezuelan revolution is a solid one. Uh, we heard the uh, statements uh, from Vice President Nicolas Maduro, uh, who weighs the Constitution of Venezuela, which has a process uh, for the continuation of the Bolivarian Revolution. Also, the head of parliament, uh, Mr. Diosado Cabello, uh, said today, after being sworn in as leader of the assembly, that, quote, as a patriot, I swear to be supremely loyal in everything I do to defend the fatherland, its institutions, and this beautiful revolution led by our commandante, Hugo Chavez, unquote. Now, at the same time, there were thousands upon thousands of supporters of the Bolivarian Revolution dressed in their uniforms outside the assembly uh, while this uh, swearing in was taking place. They were chanting, quote, we are all Chavez, our commandante will be well, he will return, unquote. So I think that the uh, process there is a solid one. The opposition, which is backed by the United States, is trying to do everything in its power to spread disinformation, to spread fear, and to also spread confusion about the character of the Venezuelan revolutionary process. Indeed. And just how much of a chance is there for the opposition to make it to the helm if another round of elections are held or Chavez passes away? We believe that the majority of people in Venezuela are in support of the Bolivarian Socialist Revolutionary Process. Uh, Venezuela is a key uh, country in the overall anti-imperialist struggle in Latin America. The country possesses the world's largest reserve of crude oil, and this is why the United States is so interested in its effort to try to destabilize and possibly overthrow the Bolivarian Revolution. But the people are solidly behind this uh, very important political process. Indeed. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to GGN. This is part four for this news report today, Friday, January 11th, 2013. I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, ddarko2012 and 2013. So without further ado, I'm going to continue here with South America. Iran's counterweight role in Latin America infuriates the United States. It goes on here, it says, for Washington and its allies, Iran is not a real threat, but rather an axis of annoyance, a thorn in their side, political counterbalance to their modus operandi in the region, said this uh, Slami. Uh, without any doubt, the influence of Iran has traveled far beyond the Middle East and has reached Latin, Latin America, a fact which has ruffled many feathers in Washington. Since 2005, Iran has opened six new embassies in Latin America and now has 11 and 17 cultural centers in the region. It says here that in reaction to the act, Iran's foreign ministry said on January 1st that the U.S. leaders are still living in the Cold War era and imagine that Latin America is still in their backyard. Venezuelan government starts new term despite Chavez's absence. So it says here that despite the absence of Hugo Chavez, the Venezuela's government has launched a new presidential term amid display of popular support. The vice president was quoted saying, it is a historic day because it is the start of President Chavez's 
2013-2019 mandate. Nicolas Sarkozy ordered the assassination of Hugo Chavez from VolterraNet.org. Go in there and check it out. So goes on here, says the Venezuela Minister of Correctional Services has announced on her Twitter account the expulsion of a French citizen known as Frederick Laurent Bouquet, December 29, 2012. He was arrested in Caracas in June 2009 with Dominican nationals in possession of an arsenal. During his trial, he, admit, he had admitted that he had been trained in Israel and was an agent of French military intelligence services planning an attack to assassinate uh, the President Chavez. Ecuadorian president warns of possible CIA attack before the elections. The president, Rafael Correa, has said the CIA may try to kill him prior to upcoming elections, citing reports of a plot to destabilize the region. Correa said the threats were credible given the history of the U.S. involvement in Latin America. He says there are many cases of the CIA interfering in Latin America affairs during a campaign tour during a coastal province of Goyas, whatever. These are credible reports because this has happened before. So, uh, pretty interesting. And the whole thing about weaponized cancer of Chavez, I think it was also other leaders in South America, um, like Argentina's uh, leader actually came down with uh, cancer as well. Bolivia, I could be wrong on that, but uh, if you want to throw it in the comment board, please. Bolivia, U.S. Embassy actively working to undermine our government. They've actually said this before, but it says that there is irrefutable evidence that the U.S. mission is working to damage the image and prestige of the government uh, said Juan Ramon Quinta, the minister of the presidency. The senior official noted the government was scrupulously following the embassy's activities and is gathering evidence to present to President Obama to tell him to stop this political ambush. He said the United States has failed to recognize Bolivia's progress on social justice, democratic rights, economic redistribution, and fighting the narcotics trade. Bolivia is the Saudi Arabia of lithium, so pretty interesting. It says now Bolivia wants to cash in on the value to be added to this precious resource with the opening of the country's first lithium proce processing plant. President Evo Morales hailed the opening of the pilot plant on the edge of the salty desert, a historic day for Bolivia. It says Bolivia has a troubled history of natural resource uh, extraction. This left-wing indigenous president has been trying to ensure at this time that the riches from its vast natural resources stay in the impoverished country saying over the past five years that Bolivia will never cede control. Then how the U.S. biofuel policy is destroying Guatemala's food supply and a new report in the New York Times to highlight how a biofuel policy in the United States and Europe has produced a rolling food catastrophe in Guatemala. They were nearly self-sufficient as far as corn production, but domestic producers were undercut by American corn exports subsidized by U.S. agricultural policy. Since then, Guatemala's domestic corn supply has dropped nearly 30 percent per capita from 95 to 2005. In a country where most families must spend about two-thirds of their income on food, the average Guatemalan is now hungrier because of biofuel development. Roughly 50 percent of the nation's children are chronically malnourished, the fourth highest rate in the world, according to the U.N. Water or gold, so we're talking about lithium and, Boliv and Bolivian stuff like that, uh, water or gold, uh, the locals across the South America or South America protest multinational mining projects. Remember I mentioned this before uh, in the protest, water is more precious than gold is the battle cry being raised throughout Latin America by anti-mining groups that include rural peasants, ecologists, and scientists. They complain of the negative environmental and social impacts caused by open pit mines, which they use explosive cyanide and fresh water. Again, in Bolivia, they seized the Spanish utility and forced nationalization from January 3rd. So uh, it says here, Spain's company has gone the way of Respal in Latin America as the Bolivian army has seized its buildings on orders from the government to na uh, nationalize the utility. On the eve uh, of New Year, Bolivian President uh, Morales ordered the nationalization of four business units owned by Spain's largest utility company. Hours later, the army and police seized the company's offices. Next up, we have a report saying the rogue, uh, a rogue nation could hijack globalist patented geoengineering schemes. So pretty, pretty, engineer, uh, pretty uh, interesting, isn't it? This engineering of the weather, as if it's not going on already. It is a rogue element. Nobody knows if there's even people flying these planes or if they're being controlled like autonomous drones. And you'd be hard-pressed to find someone that can really start showing you things like the uh, Wellspot 
uh, cloud seeding patent, um, the laws that were written around um, uh, cloud seeding and weather modification back in, what, the 70s with UN uh, treaties and charters and stuff like that, because they were aware of this. Uh, Dennis Kucinich, you know, he talked about a little bit about the space weapons and exotic weapons ban. Um, you know, national laboratories, you know, working on nanoparticles, the U.S. Uh, Navy, the NOAA, I mean, all of these different groups, the CIA and um, Evergreen are possibly supplying the planes. I mean, there's just so many entities that are in this global geoengineering uh, process that it's hard to really to, to, to show somebody, you know, this is, this is what's happening. They want to know well, who's doing it, you know, well, who's not doing it? That's my question. So it's a 2013 World Economic Forum report, a country or small group of countries persist, uh, precipitates an international crisis by moving ahead with deployment or large-scale research independent of the global community. In the World Economic Forum's annual Global Risk Report 2013, the world is being warned that a rogue nation or individual could hijack global climate change for nefarious purposes. The report mentions several possible scenarios or X factors which could occur in the coming year, among which a geoengineering nightmare, according to the report, in which a country or small group of countries precipitates an international crisis by moving ahead with deployment of large-scale research independent of the global community. Of course, they've already been doing this for at least 15 years, if not 50 years, so it's, you know, it's already going on. The global climate could, in effect, be hijacked by a rogue country. Well, it is. When it drizzles, like it did yesterday, you know, we're here in uh, January, it should be frigid cold and stuff like that, and this is in Chicago. Uh, we get this, you know, it's been warm out the last couple of days. Not natural, not, uh, this is totally engineered warmth. And people say it's nice and beautiful. It's not. They sprayed us with aerosols, chemicals that make us sick and uh, make the trees sick and all the plants and our food supply sick, our water supply, our air that we breathe sick and poisoned. So it's not good and, and, and nice when it's warm when it's not supposed to be. But it brought a bunch of drizzle rain, the chem rain, as I call it, slow drizzle all day. So they're already manipulating uh, the environment but it says that this rogue country or even a wealthy individual with unpredictable cost to agricultural infrastructure and global instability. Go in there and check it out. Links will be posted. Then we have world's oldest trees dying at alarming rate from December 7th, about a month ago. Research shows 10 times the normal death rate. So it says the very disturbing trend finds the planet's oldest trees have started dying at 10 times the normal rate, a change that could greatly damage the planet's ecosystem and biodiversity. So. It's pretty interesting uh, because you'll see videos on YouTube about people showing how these trees, especially around the drought, have just been devastated. It was actually before the drought I saw a video. A guy was going through his garden, stuff like that, and all everything was dying, and it wasn't coming back. Trees, bushes, and then you came the drought, you know. And all those trees that died, I saw the big trees sucked all the water from the smaller trees, and the smaller trees just went brown and died. U.S. Plains states uh, still suffering from the drought course, like I said, possibly engineered. The plains remain tightly gripped by severe drought, according to a report. Rains have recently fell in Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas over the last few days, but generally the worst hit areas remain in sad shape, says a climatologist. So yeah, it's also interesting to note that in Mississippi, barges are actually hitting rock bottom. 2012 is the warmest on record for the United States, January 9th, 2013. So pretty interesting. Makes the warmest year on record for the U.S. and the second most extreme uh, weather ever. So early 2012 European cold wave. That's right. Early 2012 European cold wave was a deadly cold wave that started on January 27, 2012 and brought snow and freezing tempers, temperatures much to the European continent. There was 824 plus deaths. Also, the heaviest snow was recorded in the Balkan region. Russian cold hits 123 amid bitter winter and uh, weather. And also in the Ukraine, people died as well from the 26th of December 2012. And it's just normal, right, how a rare snowfall hits Jerusalem. Yeah, snow in Jerusalem, and it's rare. Epic cold snap hits Southern California. Orange County, San Diego, freezing and flooding could be next. So, so yep, that's talking about the crops getting destroyed like the drought. Catastrophic hundreds of wildfires range in Australia amid record heat wave. And they say, forget global warming, Alaska is heading for an ice age. Actually, the 49th state has been long labeled one of the fastest warming spots on the planet. It says that's uh, not news to Alaskans who've been coping around uh, to 50 below during the coldest winters in two decades. 
and we'll return in part five with this uh, eco-fascism or terrorism. Thank you.